Hello, I'm going to show you how to do some things in Wix. I won't show you everything, but I will show you some things. So, let's start by going to Wix. And if you're not signed in, you're probably going to have to create an account, so your screen will look a little different than mine. Go ahead and create your account, and uh, then find a way to create a new site for me. I click on this button. Doesn't really matter what you do on this page. It does matter what you do on this page. Click create your own website with the Wix editor. <coughs> if you want to use one of these templates, you're welcome to, and sometimes that can be helpful. But you will have to change all of the images and the text that are part of the template. So I think that ends up being more work than it's worth usually. So what I will recommend is that you go to blank tab templates and that you find one of these layouts that you like. I kind of like this one. So I'll click on edit. To start editing things here, you can see that if I click up here, I just double clicked or triple click, clicked. So you're able to edit. Um, so I just double clicked on that and it brings up uh, this editing window. So if I want to change like gallery, I can rename that to assignments. And I don't want this to be like a sub page anymore. So you see if I pull it over, video becomes a sub page of assignments. And if I pull it out even with assignments, then video becomes a menu item like those ones. So you can edit some things that way. Let's see, some of the things that you're going to want to do is add apps. These are like the, the widgets. I think for your assignment, you need to do some sort of a blog. So you can use Wix's blog, or if you have a blogger account, then you can link to your blogger account. So I'll click on that. Add to site. And so now I have my blogger added here. If you click on it, Then I can open up settings so I can connect it to my blogger account, change the layout, the design. So I just added a widget and I added a blog which takes care of a couple of these. So here's your um, submission form for the website badge. So that takes care of the blog or the announcements. Same thing with the calendar, you can find a widget for the calendar the same way we found it for the blog. For a document repository, there's different ways to do that. Let's go to our assignments page. And you can delete this content that you don't want. And I'll search for apps again, and I'll search for files. <laughs> so you could connect to your Dropbox there if you want. It's not really what I want to do. So let's look at what else we could add. I would do a list maybe for my document repository. You can scroll down and see different layouts for lists. Maybe something like this. So I could call this like assignment. 
one, or maybe you need like a release form for your students' parents to sign. So I can change that to the release form, and then here, in the description, instead of uh, having those things, I could uh, attach a link to a, a document from my Google Drive. And that way, this is becoming a document repository. So let's just do that real quick so you can see. Share this. I have the link now. Come back here. And now I called it a release form, but so this is becoming a document repository. So there's one document. I could change this into a document. This into a document. Um, we can figure out how to get rid of this image right here so we can either remove that or we could change it if you want to have like a an icon that would represent this sort of document let's look at this again <coughs> so that would take care of the document repository calendar there's probably a widget for that yep so you can play around with those Replace the six. Uh, so a link, you can have a link anywhere on your website. The way that I set up the document repository is fulfills the link requirement because I have this link to my Google Doc. Add images. So if you go to add image, you can upload images, play around with those, and figure out how to do it. Same with video. There's a video button right here. Could link to YouTube if you want. That might be the easiest way to do it. Um, let's look at the poll or form. And this will also count for additional embedded content. So what I would do for this one is go to your Google Drive. And you're going to want to have a folder for this class. And I will create a new, put a more Google Forms. Give it a name. Website. This is a. Okay, so now I have a form set up. I'm going to go to send. And instead of just copying the link to it, you need to come over to these brackets right here. This is to embed HTML. Embedding is different from a link. A link takes you to a different site. Embedding brings a different site onto your own site. So I've copied that code for embedding the HTML. Let's come back to my Wix editor. And I am going to add. HTML code. Enter code. Update. Now you can see that I have this embedded Google form on my website. Uh, Something that you'll have to play with. You can see the size didn't work really well. There's still this scroll bar on the Google form. So go back to edit your code. And here you can play around with these uh, width and height settings. So the width, like let's just see what happens if I make that 300. And height, I'll leave it at 500. Update. You can see it just made my form a lot smaller and now it fits well. You're just going to have to experiment until you find uh, the size that works well on your web website. It's not going to be like a perfect formula to do it. So I might want to make that a little bit longer. We'll try 600. That almost got rid of the scroll bar. 
Anyways, you get the point. So there is your embedded Google form that satisfies this requirement and this requirement. And you're pretty much done with your website.